Wow. It is a Murphy's Law kind of Monday. We're going to talk about that when we come back and get started with today's installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Stick around. And look at that, only 11 minutes late, man. This is the kind of morning that makes you appreciate the easy mornings. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. That's Murphy's Law, and Murphy's camped out right back here over my shoulder. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Tom Rigsby. This is 7 Minutes in the Morning. I sure hope everything's working this morning. (laughs) Hey, when you get here, do me a favor. Do what Joe has done. Leave a comment. Say hi. Let me know that you were here. Give give the... uh, the old video, the thumbs up, the likes. If you're watching on YouTube, click on that subscribe button, ring the bell, so that you know every time a new video gets released. And usually it's about 7 o'clock-ish uh, every weekday morning. But, you know, hey, things happen. And if, by chance, you happen to be listening on your favorite podcast catcher, head over to 7minutesinthemorning.com and join in the conversation. Oh, oh, that's good coffee, but not yet my bulletproof coffee. So <clears throat> maybe that's what the problem is. Maybe I, maybe I just need to get my bulletproof going. I don't know. We'll find out. Hey, listen, how was your weekend? I hope that you had a chance to uh, rest, relax, uh, recuperate, rejuvenate, all the R words that you can think of. Uh, and if you're a football kind of person, hope your team won. Mine did. Just in case there was any doubt. So last week, I, I talked, uh, man, it's kind of a grab bag week last week. And um, a lot of that was leading up to Friday uh, where I had a chance to talk with the folks at, at Rise, formerly known as Hot Coffee. <laughs> Still like Rise. I mean, uh, Hot Coffee pretty well. Anyway. Uh, had a chance to speak with them. That was, uh, that was a pretty interesting group. I think we had a good time with that. We were talking about keeping your windshield clean and kind of working through some of that last week and thinking through it over the weekend for some other projects I'm working on. Um, I, I think that there's, I, I think there's an element here that we could benefit from talking about. I'm going to have to get another sip of coffee. <clears throat> Who ever heard of fall allergies? <clears throat> anyway, so the the other element I want to hit you with is um, sometimes what gets stuck on your windshield. Hey, good morning, Jessica. Sometimes what gets stuck on your windshield becomes a distraction. You know, we talked about the windshield being the the full playing field of everything you can do with your with your life, with your business. And if we just driving down the road, it gets dirty. And so the little space we're looking out of closes down, closes down until it's this tiny little thing. And it happens so slowly that we don't even notice it until our decisions are clouded, our, our opportunities are clouded through all that dirt and grime. But what happens, and I had a great graphic, and I don't have it ready because I was running late this morning, but a bug splat, right? You get a big bug splats right on the windshield and then the only thing you can see is that big bug right and even if it i mean especially if it's right in your field of view even if it's off to the side just a little bit your eye keeps getting pulled this way right or maybe it's a rock i we had this a couple of trips ago going out to houston to see the kids um not even a big rock little rock popped up hitting the windshield and it's right in front of my nose Right, and so <clears throat> we got the windshield people to come out and fix it, but because of the way it was cracked, <laughs> sorry, because of the way it was cracked, he couldn't do a lot to fix it. So it's still there. It's not spreading, but it's still a distraction. <clears throat> and here's the thing I want to point out: those distractions, because it's right here on the windshield, pulls our attention in close. Instead of letting us pay attention further out down the road, I don't know if they still teach this or not, but you know, you kind of drive two car lengths ahead of where you are. That's the way I was taught how to do it. 
<clears throat> and you're not paying attention to that. And, and there have been times, dude, I lived in, in Dallas for a while <laughs> and I saw a wreck happen like two or three cars ahead of me and the dude went airborne. Right. But because I saw it and reacted to it, something that was ahead of me, I was able to avoid all that. Right. But when we're so focused on what's right here in front of us, we lose sight of the bigger picture. That's one reason why it's so important to keep it clean is because those small things, and they might be small, seemingly innocuous little things, but they keep drawing our eye back to it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jessica's exactly right. Target fixation. When you're driving a motorcycle, you drive ahead of where you are, not where you are. Because your mind is a magnificent piece of machinery. It, it will, it's kind of like basketball, right? You, you know, you focus on the goal when you shoot the ball, not the ball in your hand. Right. And your mind has this magnificent way after lots of practice to make the ball go where your eye was looking, not right here. And, you know, on a motorcycle, you drive, you know, 100 feet in front of you, whatever the distance is, but you drive out in front of you, your mind will, will knows how to send signals to the rest of your body to make that happen. And when you're driving through life, right? If you are always looking at what's right in front of you, then you you can't be adequately prepared for what comes next. And when that happens, that is when we get into this circumstance where life is happening to us instead of us creating the life we crave. If we're able to look down the road, <coughs> excuse me, if we're able to look down the road and make choices now, like I did behind that, that wreck, if we can make choices now that get us where we want to go, then we're much better off than if we get there and we're driving by and looking and saying, man, that's a nice looking place. Maybe I wish I could have stayed there. So don't let the things, yes, I mean, sometimes you have to pay attention to them. The bug splat happens. You got to run the windshield wiper, squirt the juice up there, maybe get out and clean it off. You have to address those things, but don't, don't allow yourself to become fixated on them. Right? Hit them, move them, get them out of the way. And, and if it happens over and over and over again, now we need to start talking about a process and a system to deal with those instead of handling them one off. But the very first step is just to acknowledge that they happen, be aware of them and know what to do with them. So as you go through your Monday today, and I've had bug splats all morning this morning, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Came in here to fire up the computer, and it fired up just like that. No camera. All my other cameras were working, but this one wasn't. All right, restart the computer. Computer came back up. Very slow. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, it's one thing after another, but you deal with them and you move on. You proceed imperfectly so that you can continue to make progress. But here's the first step. This is what I want you to take away today. I'm going to wrap it up. Be aware. Just be aware. As things present themselves, be them opportunities or obstacles, phone calls, customers, emails, whatever they happen to be, classify each one of them. Begin to practice right? this process of classifying this. Is this a bug splat or is this something I need to focus on? And the very best way, and I, again, didn't bring it in here with me, you know, is to begin the day, lead your day from quiet, right? Find a quiet space in the morning so that you can define what my five, what my top five are, my P plus four F, right? One priority and four focus areas. If you know what those four are, does this thing that's coming in, does it fit into one of those, one of those five? Then it's bug splat. If it does fit into one of those five, put it into that bucket and move on. All right? So that's it. Your homework for today is to practice identifying bug splat. <laughs> kind of like that name for it. Hope this has been helpful. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll get rid of that before tomorrow. <clears throat>
Ah, there we go. I hope this has been helpful. On if and only if it has, I would appreciate if you would share it with your network. Maybe send it to someone specifically who is struggling with bug splat in their life. Windshield is all dirty and they don't know which way to turn next. I would love to talk with them tomorrow and I would forever appreciate the confidence that you have put in me to share this with them. I will do my very best to be back here at seven o'clock in the morning tomorrow, uh, the technology and Murphy willing, uh, you guys have a magnificent Monday and I'll talk to you again tomorrow.